this, but you're about to walk into a whole mess of danger. It's cows. Look at this. The unicorn. What secrets do you hold? Let them escape. For generations, Tintin, Brussels' fabled son, has represented virtue, good, and the pursuit of truth against the odds. European commissioners are, in many ways, supposed to behave in much the same way. Instead, a different story is emerging in which modern day Tintins have traveled the globe in search of a hidden data and the commission has been forced to explain itself again and again. That everybody who has the honor to serve as member of the European Commission is informed prior to the vetting procedure and the hearings of the European Parliament of very specific obligations, including the one to submit uh, in full transparency a list of interest. Yes. First came LuxLeaks, when Captain Juncker has some memory recall issues about his time as Prime Minister of Luxembourg. Captain Juncker had reinvented himself as President of the European Commission and now cheered as Tintin went in pursuit of a data goldmine, a data trail leading straight to corporate tax evaders. Not to be left out of the picture, former Commission President José Manuel Barroso decided a new job at Goldman Sachs was just what he needed. Barroso is now facing a formal inquiry and a growing band of commission officials are threatening strike action if Barroso is not heavily sanctioned. They say he has deeply embarrassed the commission and damaged the European project. I think very, very clearly, yes. Uh, particularly in the case of uh, Mr. Barroso, I think uh, amongst the wider public, even the uh, European Commission's own employees, uh, it has damaged its uh, reputation. You can see that uh, 160,000 people have signed a petition which was started by the Commission's own employees uh, asking for heavy sanctions on Mr Barroso. The anonymous officials are furious at Barroso for receiving a golden handshake from Goldman Sachs to advise on Brexit. They're calling for an exemplary punishment, merited, they say, by Barroso's betrayal. So far, more than 150,000 supporters have signed a petition condemning Barroso, which is being delivered to the Commission via an intermediary for fear of reprisals against Commission staff. Uncovering the curious web of interests represented in the European institutions took one step forward with a new whistleblower platform created by the Green Group in the European Parliament. The website is intended for wider issues than the European institutions, but it could go some way to addressing the fears of EU whistleblowers fearful for their own careers. What is a bit new about this initiative is that, contrary to Wikileaks for instance, this platform is coupled with expertise. In other terms, at the receiving end, you have, and we are making no mystery about that, we have the Green Group in the European Parliament, Green CFA Group, that has quite a lot of expertise to actually exploit the material that uh, we are going to receive. Then came the Bahamas leaks, revealing former Dutch commissioner Neely Cruz hidden links to offshore companies. Cruz, a high-profile commissioner on the Barroso, was listed in leaked documents as the director of Mint Holdings Limited during at least part of her tenure as commissioner responsible for competition and digital agenda policies between 2004 and 2014. The Commission has confirmed an independent ethics panel will now investigate Cruz offshore companies. Cruz said she assumed responsibility and would cooperate fully. Next in the firing line is Austria's Benito Ferreira Waldner, again a commissioner on the Barroso. She was revealed by a Dutch newspaper to have taken up a new job in the same month she left the Commission in 2010. Ferreira Waldner took a job with Gamesa, a Spanish wind turbine exporter. The Dutch paper reported that former Commission President Barroso would have known about her decision, but didn't sanction her. Definitely the speed is a point in question. At CEO, we believe that the cooling off period for former commissioners should be extended for three years, and for former presidents of the Commission should be extended to five years. But also the 
the content of the and the type of positions that they've accepted are concerning because it seems that they involve providing advice on lobbying of the pharma institutions. The fact that uh, the Barroso case has been referred to the uh, Ethics Commission shows that uh, there is a very serious case to answer there in terms of breach of integrity standards. However, the Cruz case was a clear breach of the rules, so no need to refer to the Ethics Commission, and I think they just need to decide on what the sanction is. Uh, I would say they're both equally serious. The proposals we make are about rebuilding trust in all EU institutions. Because for citizens, Brussels is Brussels. And they don't distinguish between Commission, Parliament, Council. They look at the EU at all of us in the same way. Do you have confidence in the Ethics Committee? Well, uh, there are people of, of very good standing, of, of high integrity, that's for sure. But I think the question is, uh, in these particular cases, is the process going to be transparent? The committee is a very flawed body. It's uh, not really an independent body. Um, it's selected by the College of Commissioners and it has uh, deep, deep ties to the, to, to the commissioners that are sitting right now. But even if it was independent, if it was completely made out of professionals, uh, outside professionals, as it stands, it cannot actually implement its own recommendations. It can simply tell its opinion to the College of Commissioners and then the commissioners themselves have to decide whether or not to accept them. So basically, your family gets to choose your judge and jury. The judge and jury makes a recommendation to your family and your family decide what happens. Yeah, we're literally asking colleagues to judge colleagues. Catalan MEP Ramon Termosa has tabled a written question to the European Commission to determine with clarity the nature of the investigation into former President Barroso's Goldman Sachs links. We ask to investigate the Barroso situation and not only Barroso, there are other former commissioners which have been involved in being contracted by big multinationals. So we ask the Commission to come up with a clarification of the situation. Parliament is not the only watchdog against potential corruption. The European Ombudsman, Emily O'Reilly, has also made her presence felt and made certain that questions of commissioners' propriety will not be swept under the carpet. I think the key issue in all these cases is uh, not whether politicians should go and, and uh, offer their uh, advice to private companies. The question is, are they going to use their networks and their influence which they have built up when they were a member of the Commission or any other government uh, and to, in a, sense, in a sense, lobby on behalf of their current employers or pass over privileged information? Uh, I think if you can rule out all those things, then we don't have a problem with these moves. Other former commissioners, including Carl de Gucht and Vivian Redding, have been criticised for the speed and content with which they took up new commercial interests after leaving the Commission. Both have denied any wrongdoing. The Parliament, of course, has absolutely no rules in place at all, and I, I, I find it uh, uh, odd that uh, parliamentarians are very quick to criticise the Commission, which has a uh, has a ethics regime in place. It may not be perfect, but there are no safeguards at all uh, concerning the revolving door in the Parliament. You can walk out of the Parliament at the end of your term and straight into a lobbying job. Indeed, you can even walk into a lobbying job while you're a member of the parliament, and I think this is something that needs to be looked at and stopped. Ultimately, it boils down to trust. Trust that we do things openly, fairly, and in the best interest of the citizens we serve. Today's proposal for a mandatory transparency register covering interactions with all three EU institutions is, in my view, an important step in the right direction. If you're President Juncker, what uh, sanction would you impose on former President Barroso? Well, I feel uh, sadly the only tool that uh, it is available right now is to refer the case to the Court of Justice, the European Court of Justice, and seek uh, to remove him, uh, to strip him of his pension. What Juncker can and should do is actually implement reforms so that it prevents new cases from happening. Well, there aren't a lot of options for the European Commission. Uh, the, uh, the main sanctions are to claw back some of the pension, uh, or in Ms. Cruz's case, uh, the transition allowances, of course, can be, uh, can be clawed back. Uh, but I think the most important sanction is the reputational one. Uh, people of these st people's stature are more concerned about their legacy, reputation, uh, and they're standing in the eyes of the business world and perhaps any other, anything else. We think that there should be a full reform of the Code of Conduct and that that should Im include, for instance, a new independent and professional body, uh, the Ethics Committee, that could start its own, uh, uh, its own investigations and uh, implement its own recommendations. I think that uh, clear damage has been done 
and it doesn't help uh, the European Union uh, in this moment in which, uh, after the Brexit vote, we see rising of Euroscepticism in so many member states, and not only in the anti-European parties. I see many colleagues from the big families in this house with growing Euroscepticism, and, and this has been a disaster for the reputation of the Commission and the European institution as a whole. There may be fireworks ahead, and it seems certain that for current and former commissioners who are careless with the code of conduct and transparency, the writing is on the wall.